When American doughboys marched into battle in World War I, they not only faced the brutality of trench warfare, machine guns, and gas attacks, they also had to contend with their own inferior equipment, none worse than their clumsy backpack. To help answer your questions about this equipment, a group from the Great War Historical Society strapped on the original gear and ran through some simulated combat exercises. After a couple hours, the men sympathized with their World War I counterparts. The pack was not a soldier-friendly piece of equipment. It's, in my opinion, it's got to be one of the worst designed pieces of equipment I've ever used. This is not a combat pack. This is. Un, it's almost impossible to move around with this thing. It's so ungainly that just trying to run or turn, you've got an extra almost foot sticking off your back. And the sheer time involved in unloading it and loading it just does not make it feasible to be using in a combat situation. If the officer or the man in charge had the time and had the smarts, he would have the, the men dump this before they went into actual combat. It was no accident that what they carried had severe limitations. The pack was, if you can believe it, meant to be inflexible. In the early 1900s, the United States Army decided that a soldier should carry no more than one third of his body weight in gear and equipment. So they set out to design a pack and specific items to meet the Doughboy's everyday needs. In 1910, they came up with this. They called it the M1910 pack. It's nothing more than a bunch of straps and flaps. It's not a bag. It appears to be a bag, but it is not a bag, trust me. You pull the straps and flaps, and this thing just explodes. And this is what the World War I doughboy had to put up with. The idea of the design was like a squaw's papoose, all swaddled up on a packboard. They were forcing the soldier to take into battle what they thought he should take with them. But the problem is, is that they, they really didn't think much about the soldier's mobility. It's like a huge lead weight on his back. The pack must be a little heavy for you. Actually, it is. These are the contents of the M1910 pack laid out for inspection. The bottom section of the pack, known as the diaper, was detachable and carried the soldier's blanket, shelter half, and shelter half pole and pins. On the belt, you'd find ammo, a first aid kit, a canteen cover, and a canteen and cup. Inside the flaps were a bacon tin, a condiment can for salt, sugar, and coffee, and boxes of bread rations, sometimes packed in metal to protect them from gas attacks. Also, a towel, soap dish, shaving kit, handkerchief, foot powder, and extra socks. Attached to the outside were the bayonet, shovel, or entrenching tool, and finally, a mess kit. The entire weight of the pack is on his shoulders, so it's not very comfortable at all. It's not evenly distributed. If he is on a long march and he wants to grab anything out of his pack, he can't do that without having to stop, unravel everything, get what he needs, and pack everything back up. Due to the placement of the bayonet, most soldiers cannot pull it out, withdraw it from the sheath, or put it themselves. They actually have to have a buddy do it for them. One of the biggest problems that I've had with it is this strap that comes along really cuts into your armpit. And you find out your arm's going numb. Incredibly, this terrible design remained in service until early in World War II. It was sort of the right idea, trying to get things packed small and fit it onto a soldier, but it's not designed for combat. It's not really designed for hiking, and frankly, maybe you could put some school books in it, but it's not designed for anything much better than that.